I talk a lot about transit systems that already exist, but today I'm going to talk about a class of transit systems that is only just getting its start, with new lines starting to pop up around the world, and something which is possibly the next evolution of regional transportation. Such systems could be particularly relevant to us in North America and even places in Asia where there aren't strong regional transit networks already. Perhaps the best example of such a system that can and should be replicated around the world is the RRTS in Delhi, a shockingly large project you've probably never heard of. Welcome back to RM Transit, let's dive into it. If you're not already, consider supporting the channel on Patreon or via YouTube memberships to help me bring you more videos shedding light on transit projects that people just aren't talking enough about. As you know if you've been watching the channel, something I really like a lot is regional or suburban rail. But one of the things you've probably noticed is that the places that do it best tend to have really strong historic rail networks, which they've built on substantially over time. This is important because building whole new regional rail systems through even low density suburban areas could be incredibly challenging because of land acquisition, for example. The size of mainline trains can actually make things even harder since the size of the infrastructure you need is more substantial. I'd argue this seems to even be the case in places that did have historic rail networks, but which sort of abandoned them or appropriated them for freight use. All of that said, even if you do have a historic regional rail network, speed restrictions caused by the often indirect paths we took with our rail networks in the past could mean that travel times aren't fantastic. Worse still, even if there are sections of track that do have fairly high top speeds, North America and a lot of the world actually has a shortage of EMUs which are both very high speed and high capacity. I'd say this is in part because in Europe, which is probably the world's greatest regional rail market, there isn't that much overlap between demand for very high speeds and very high capacity, because most European cities are comparatively dense. That said, high speeds and high capacities are something that will be really important if cities are going to build a new regional rail overlay. I think the history of doing this high capacity regional rail completely independent of traditional rail networks probably to some degree owes its start to the late 20th century US metros like BART and the Washington Metro, which again are metro systems with very high top speeds and regional scope. I've talked about a few of them in previous explained episodes. As it turns out, a fair number of Chinese cities have actually taken this model and expanded on it, entirely new lines with high speed trains that can serve regional demand. At the same time, sometimes sharing infrastructure with local metro services. This can be useful when your development patterns don't necessarily follow your rail network, as is the case again in many places around the world. I talked about another similar project that maybe makes its regional high speed nature a bit more clear in Seoul's Great Train Express project or GTX. This project actually has similar specifications to those projects in China. This video isn't about the GTX though, it's about Delhi, a city whose metro network will definitely be getting an explained later this year, so make sure you're subscribed for that. If you have good footage of the system or are willing to maybe shoot some, send me an email down below. Now, I've talked about the Delhi Metro and the various metro systems India is building in a previous video, and I feel that this project kind of shares a similar attribute in that there's a lot of stuff going on and there isn't much news coverage of it, which is really unfortunate because it's quite impressive. The only coverage that really made its way to me was in technical journals and local media. Some of those great local media outlets are, for example, the Metro Rail Guy, who covers rail projects all across India in fantastic detail. There's also RS Live, who does a ton of construction updates on various infrastructure projects across the country. I'll link both their stuff down below. Now, out of the gate, the RRTS feels really reminiscent of the GTX. It will have very few stations on its initial first line with an 80 kilometer route that only has 14 stations for an average station spacing of around five kilometers. It'll also have a very high design speed at 180 kilometers per hour with trains actually operating at 160 kilometers per hour, both well above what you see on traditional regional rail systems and even higher than those systems because of the straight alignments and wide station spacings, which bring that average speed much higher. Maybe this isn't all that surprising given some Korean companies have actually been involved in the project as with a lot of the metro projects in India. That said, the RRTS has some distinct differences from the GTX. 
For example, a lot of the GTX project is underground, and deep underground, while the RRTS is utilizing a lot of elevated viaducts not so different from what you would see on a modern elevated metro. This means that despite the fact that the GTX started construction in 2017 and the RRTS only started construction in 2019, the RRTS is set to open an entire three years earlier than the GTX in 2025. I should also note that like the GTX, there are two other lines rapidly advancing in the system, which will all connect at Sarai Kale Khan, southeast of Delhi's center. These lines will travel to the north, while another one will travel to the southwest, and the specifications at least should be intercompatible between the various lines. Beyond this, there are also plans for several more lines which might form their own independent network with another interchange point. Now, you come here for the technical details, and so here they are. The system will utilize ETCS level 2. Uh, you can learn more about ETCS in my signaling video I did with Tyson Moore. I really wish this technology would come to Canada. The rolling stock on this line is one of the most interesting parts. Not only does it look like the best rolling stock I've seen in India, but it also looks far better than the rolling stock for these other express rail lines I've mentioned. It looks great. It's going to be manufactured by Alstom, who, to be fair, does have a lot of great designs and will be manufactured right in India, as with, say, the REM trains. Now, as it turns out, the fleet as a whole is divided into two classes. You have express trains and local trains. This project has been combined in a pretty smart way to provide local service within that city as well. Essentially, the portion of the line that travels through the city will have some additional local stations that will be bypassed, likely using passing loops by the express trains. There will be a shorter version of the trains used on the main portion of the line, at three cars long, which will serve these local stops as well as the combined RRTS and local metro stops. This will form the first line of Mirat's metro system, but what's perhaps even more interesting is that this is a really good opportunity for cities which are adjacent to Delhi to kind of form their first metro line, which they can build off of with new lines, but which will allow some level of through running from their metro systems into Delhi's, which I think is actually really cool. It kind of reminds me of Tokyo. It's also worth pointing out that since some of the capacity on the RRTS will be used by these local trains, perhaps we could see a branch in the line in the future to serve another outlying city, which would use its trunk capacity a bit more efficiently. What's also important to mention, if you are wondering, the system could be very successful, six car trains doesn't sound like a lot, is that stations are built for at least nine car trains in the future to allow for a lot more capacity. Now, as you might expect, this line does not through operate onto the Delhi Metro, which is its own fully independent system that's already quite substantial. But what it does have is an additional connection to the pink line beyond the one I already mentioned and three connections to the blue line. The service will take an hour from end to end, which given the 80 kilometer length of the line is quite impressive, given that there are station stops to be made, 14 as I mentioned before. Now the question to ask is, what differentiates the RRTS from a more traditional regional rail system, or maybe something like a regional metro like the REM? Well compared to traditional regional rail, you'll have a lot more modern features from day one, as well as a design that's optimized for easier construction. That's things like platform screen doors, as well as lighter trains, which are able to be carried by modest elevated viaducts. This could be a really interesting option for places with a lot of highways, like North America. I should also mention that the stations are actually going to include business class lounges, as well as other amenities, making this feel like a true regional transportation system, with stations that will become significant destinations in their own right. Now, compared to the REM, the RRTS will have trains which are much higher capacity and which use mainline electrification, but probably most importantly, which are much, much faster. And this will make a lot of lines sprawling out into giant urban areas much more practical. For example, an RRTS style system could seem very natural in places like cities in Texas, when combined with strong local transit options from the various hub stations. At the end of the day, high-speed regional rail, as I'll call it, is a super exciting option and something that I hope to see a lot of in North America in the future. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.